Welcome to a survey of Ocarina of Time homes and businesses. Imagine, if you will, through a course of magical events, perhaps gaining the ire of some sort of magical being, like a fairy, you're transported into the magical world of Ocarina of Time. What would you eat? What would you wear? What would your job be? Uh, I don't know. That's between you and God. I'm just a court-appointed real estate agent. Or maybe I'm a building inspector? Listen, Ocarina of Time. Uh, wait, no, I've got it. I'm an appraiser. Yeah, there's different places people live. There's also stores. Uh, and I, as an appraiser, have been tasked with going through them all. Uh, so let's look at all of those, both of, let's look at those things. Right off the bat, I also want to clarify, I'm looking at the Nintendo 64 version of the game, not the GameCube port uh, on Master Quest, and not the 3DS version. Let's just, we'll stick with the OG, okay? All right, let's start with Kokiri Forest. Turning on my cartridge for the first time in a while, I booted back up as Young Link in my very own house in Kokiri Forest. It's a charming, honestly kind of too large space for how little stuff I have in it, and uh, spoilers, that's gonna be a theme. There is a bed, a small table, and what I believe to be an incredibly large sink with a dirty, dirty mirror next to it. Also, uh, this bucket over here that is probably my toilet and some gardening tools, which are probably also my toilet. For airflow, we have a window and of course the door, which being directly across from one another probably generate a pretty good cross breeze, or at least they would. Uh, I think they do, but that back window definitely just faces this rocky facade outside the house, um, so maybe not that effective. But still, it's charming. It's not huge by any means, but there is plenty to love. I definitely feel like it's lacking something, but I like the textured, aged nature of the floor. Being able to see the warbly nature of the tree with all of the rings is really cool, and it definitely shows off that, hey, you're inside a treehouse aspect of the house. Also, none of the houses in this town have any sort of doors. They're all just hollowed out and open, but I like that Link has a little small curtain to give at least a bit more privacy. Uh, I do wish there was a little bit more color going on inside of the house though. Also that big window right by my bed, boy, you're gonna get sick. Uh, or at least for me personally, sleeping right by that with it open at night, uh, I would wake up with my eyes puffy and sneezing up a storm. Um, but my allergies suck, uh, that's me. Honestly, I think the most challenging part of this home is this really cool front deck. Uh, it's an awesome feature and I would definitely, you know, have a patio set out here so I could chill out there with a jar full of bugs at the end of a long day or whatever they drink here. Uh, but while it's really cool, it also raises the thought of, how do you get your furniture up here? The thought of moving furniture in this house is incredibly challenging. No wonder Link has such a sparsely decorated place. I mean, overall, the house is a pretty good house. I like the location in the neighborhood. I like that it's a little more private, and I think the interior has a ton of potential for growth. So what about the rest of the neighborhood? Well, there are five houses in Kokiri Forest. Link's house, Saria's house, I never knew how to, Saria? Midos, the twin's house, and the know-it-all brothers. The last building in the town is the Kokiri shop. Notably in the neighborhood is access to the Great Deku Tree, if you can get past some monsters, uh, the Lost Woods, and centrally there's a very charming source of fresh water from a waterfall that cascades down. Near the entrance of the forest from Hyrule Field is Mido's house, the definitive jerk of the town. Fitting with his personality, his house sucks. He's got it set up in this weird array around a red carpet, leading to this stump that he likes to lord over. A stump that grew inside of the treehouse? I've seen cases where, you know, trees grow out of like mother trees, but the logic of this stump getting inside of a hollowed out tree and growing to this size, it, it makes no sense. So I have to assume that it was uprooted somewhere else and brought here. Um, I don't know, weird house, weird tiled floor, feels unnatural. Uh, I guess he put down vinyl planking on the floor to try and kind of modernize it. Uh, or maybe the wood was all stained from his giant chamber pot that he keeps here in the corner. I'm not sure. Uh, maybe he's planning on flipping the house and skipping town with his profits. Uh, he's probably gonna sell it to some developers who will turn it into a bazaar uh, and drive the Kokiri store out of business, thus forever changing the course of this town. 
He's got his bed shoved over here in the corner, right next to the aforementioned chamber pot, which that's honestly, that's just filthy. This guy, he's a dirty dog. What do you expect? Uh, the vibes are bad here, and it feels less like a home and more like, I don't know, the quarters of some tyrant, which I guess makes sense, but spoilers, I think this is probably the worst house in the village. Uh, moving up the hill, we've got the know-it-all brothers. Three brothers all living together in a space with no beds. Uh, I guess these guys sleep on the ground, or maybe they sleep outside, do a little bit of cowboy camping. <laughs> Hard to say. But also, there is uh, room for a bed. But I suppose that's part of being forest children. They don't have a lot of tools for making furniture, and they certainly aren't venturing out anywhere to buy any furniture. So, you know, they're pretty limited in what they have. It's mostly tables and stumps. Mostly stump tables or chairs. I guess they do make pots. You know, they must have clay-rich soil around here somewhere. This house actually has some shelving, which is pretty nice. You know, I really think that the highlight of the whole place is that there is a large hearth in the center. This is a nice fire that they got going. Makes the whole place feel pretty cozy. Although they're definitely losing points because there is not any sort of proper ventilation, as you can see. Uh, there's no way that the smoke is getting out of the house effectively. So these guys are just breathing in those fumes all the time. Uh, another possibly questionable thing is the location. It's really near a giant boulder that rolls around endlessly, which I have to imagine is kind of like living near a highway, but I guess you actually don't hear the sound of the boulder until you crawl through the hole. Uh, so it's kind of like there's, you know, one of those high barrier walls up. Um, so, you know, maybe it doesn't lose any points for that because if they heard it, you know, you'd hear it from Link's house too because he lives pretty close as well to the giant rolling boulder. Um, additionally, I like that there's all this fencing over here that you could garden in. It seems like for all their intelligence, uh, these boys have not managed to grow anything other than the grass that grows literally everywhere. If you tilled the soil a little bit, you could have a little homestead going, which would really up the appeal in my book. Any sort of way that you can increase your sustainability and use the land around you. Moving forward into the heart of the Kokiri Forest is Saria's house. My first impression is that it is honestly, it's very charming. I like that there's a tapestry up uh, that along with this rug in the center of the room really breaks up the kind of monotonous brown that you see in most of the houses around here. Otherwise, it's a lot of kind of the same as far as furniture goes. Table, stump, chairs, stump, another, another stump bed in the corner and some pots and whatnot. It seems to be the only house in this town with a sink is Lynx. Uh, I suppose you'd want somewhere to keep water and wash things as the rest of the houses are on the ground and able to get access to running water through the town a lot easier, but uh, also is Link really hoisting buckets of water up into his house? Uh, probably not. One other downside of Sirius' house is that it has this big ramp going up around it, which you might at first think, okay, cool, there's like easy rooftop access. Uh, while it doesn't have a super steep pitch, this roof is too steep to like put any furniture on or hang out on, really, uh, I, like do anything with. I guess you can check on the condition of your roof pretty easily uh, and see, okay, yeah, that bud's still growing because this tree is still growing leaves and is still alive, I guess, which means, you know, my walls must be healthy and not rotting. Um, so that's good. It's nice that you can see that, you know, you don't really have that guarantee with any of the other houses. Um, but also having this access, uh, why? Why is this ramp here? And the downside is that it actually leads up to this bridge system, uh, a bridge system that doesn't really seem to serve any sort of purpose and does not go anywhere. Uh, it just exists so that this girl can stand up here and hang out, I guess. I mean, you know, like if this is your boy, you know, like whatever, you don't care, whatever. But if you have people just constantly walking up the outside of your house, that would drive me insane. And she's here all the time, day or night. This girl is chilling. Personally, it would annoy me and it kind of creeps me out. Uh, especially it creeps me out the thought of hearing someone walking up the side of my house at night. I would not want to live with that. 
Uh, but I guess, you know, you also live in a neighborhood with no doors, so everyone here is very trusting and familiar with each other. I guess that's just part of it. Um, but also, I'm not past the whole bridge thing yet. There's absolutely zero reason for this to not just be a ladder. Like, l literally, we see the exact same thing in Kakariko Village, where they have a lookout tower that's significantly taller than this, and it still uses a ladder to get up there. I think they literally just don't know how to make ladders here. Moving on beyond Saria's house, we move on to the twins' house, which immediately you're gonna notice is right by some water. And I'm talking like right by it, which in some ways is appealing, but I'm talking right by the water. To kind of an alarming degree, Looking inside the house, its layout is clearly influenced by this fact. You'll notice that this is one of the only kind of multi-level houses, and that these beds are up on a sort of half-step, split-level design, which I can't help but feel has to be a response to the water that is literally right outside your house. You know, like during flooding seasons, you know, spring, maybe summer, whenever more water is coming down from Death Mountain and the other higher areas, it all just comes down from the Zoro's Domain, actually. Um, or, you know, maybe you're getting more rainfall. Uh, chances are, that lower level down there, flooded. You know, at least you're able to sleep in the dry, but it's gonna be a nightmare. You're gonna have to be dealing with constantly getting that mitigated, you know? Your stuff is gonna be soaked. Anything you leave down there, the wood, it's all just gonna <laughs> soak up this water. Anything, anything you leave down there. Uh, drying it out is gonna be a nightmare. It's all gonna be warped. Plus, who knows how long it would be there before the water actually goes back down. So what, are you just gonna wade into your house every night to sleep? Or, you know, you have to sandbag it to keep the water out of the first floor. This, the kind of location, it seems like a pro at first. Uh, and, and I like the exterior, but I, I really mean you wanna, I really, you, you wanna be further away from the water, okay? Moving to the other side of the river, you go to the shop, which is a fraction better, being a little bit further away from the water. But you're gonna see, again, it's kind of concerningly close. Inside the shop, it's hard to really get a view of it. There's kind of a back area that you can walk towards, which indicates that there's, you know, there's certainly something over there, but, you know, maybe it's more living quarters or not. They don't really want you to see. Maybe it's not zoned as a residential area, so they're, you know, they're trying to keep you out. Uh, it, you know, it's probably just storage back there. It's probably just a bunch of nuts. I'm not convinced that any of these children sleep anyways, though. They always seem to be just standing around waiting for something. Anyways, I'm not here to judge these people. Just determine the value of their homes and thus make or break their financial future. Uh, I guess I should explain how property is assessed in Hyrule. You see, there's a lot of intricacies to property values. It's a complex process. Uh, the main one is location, you know? You could have a really big, beautiful house. It could be, you know, even in pretty good condition, but if the neighborhood is not desirable or unsuitable for safe human habitation, your house, uh, it isn't gonna be worth anything. Trust me, I, I live in Milwaukee. Anyways, Kokiri Forest. Uh, it's a secluded private place, uh, but also incredibly rural. Not a lot of jobs around here, which means not a lot of people looking to live here. All right, so let's say the average property value expected for a house in this area is 1,000 rupees. You know, that's the growing rate. Uh, with that in mind, let's start evaluating. And first, we're going to look at Link's house. Uh, taking into consideration the unique architecture, the decently secluded location, and that it overall, it does look appealing. Uh, I would assess it at 1300 rupees. I think that overall, very nice house, but the pros of the unique architecture and the front balcony are weighed down by the fact that this house is not accessible, but not enough to stop it from being one of the best places you could live in town. Mido's house, weird off-putting layout and decoration choices aside, there's not a whole lot bad about this house. I, I don't personally like covering up the natural floors with that LVP, but some buyers will like that. You know, this one, it's right down the middle. Average property coming in at 1,000 rupees, you know? Someone's gotta, someone's gotta set the middle. Saria's house, uh, I think it has a pretty cool overall location. I love the interior. But unfortunately, that exterior pathway really drags it down for me. Uh, I mean, it's decorated nice, but you can put a rug and tapestry up anywhere. 
You know, having a ramp up to weird towers connected to your house. You know, it's, it's one thing to have an access road uh, connected to your property, but uh, th this really drags it down to 900 rupees. That's, that's the price, 900 rupees. The twins house. Listen, cool house. And I do think it gets some points for having an interesting exterior, but I'm, I'm gonna be honest. The location, devastating. That water is going to be a nightmare. I think you're gonna wish you weren't living here. 650 rupees. Don't, don't buy it, don't buy it. Definitely don't waive the inspection. The Kokiri store, how do you assess a store in comparison to a house? Well, that is the market, you know, in the area. Are there opportunities for growth? Is the store special or unique in any way um, that affects the price? This is pretty much none of those things. You're selling sticks in a forest. Uh, either everyone here is chumps or you're desperate and grasping at literal straws. You know, there's not a huge market here with the residents of Kokiri Forest and, you know, maybe some wanderers from the Lost Woods being your main clientele. I'd assess it at 900 rupees. I just don't think the outlook is great on this shop. Uh, but as most residents here are unlikely to be armed, I'd wager Deku nuts and seeds are in high demand. So if you have to travel anywhere dangerous, uh, as well as this being, I guess, the only medical treatment in town via hearts, uh, that probably is the main thing keeping this store in existence. Not particularly thriving, but existing. The Know-It-All Brothers. Uh, in my opinion, this is the nicest house of the bunch. It uses the space inside generally very well. Uh, the only real concern is the lack of ventilation in relation to the fact that they've had a fire cooking in here for God knows how long uh, without it being properly ventilated. So, you know, it's, it's really smoky in here. It's gonna need some major mitigation. First, you're gonna need to have some sort of ventilation installed. You're gonna have to cut windows or do something with the roof uh, and you'll have to clean and seal up all that wood to keep that smell out. Um, but even considering that, I think it's a really good house. It's a good location. Uh, it's raised up nicely, elevated on this hill, private from other houses. There's a fenced in area that you could have, you know, that garden or really whatever you can kind of vision for back here. Uh, and despite being close to the giant boulder, it's, you know, it's quiet up here. Uh, plus I think maybe that whole boulder area is on the same parcel of land. Uh, but considering the fact that you have to crawl through a tiny hole and I don't know that, yeah, I, I couldn't do it. Um, I don't think it really adds much value, but considering all of this, even with the work that would have to be put into the house, I'm gonna evaluate it at 1,350 rupees, worth the elbow grease. Uh, you could see a pretty dramatic return on your investment. Uh, and personally, this is where I'd wanna live in town. But uh, also, I don't wanna live here. There's a lot of countries that are facing crises of aging populations. Uh, this has the opposite problem. I can't imagine there's going to be much growth in this town or anyone looking to live here. Uh, and as people like Saria are choosing to essentially abandon their houses, eventually you're gonna be looking at a ghost town until you know some Hylian mega corporation swoops in and buys up all the land for cheap and uh, you know, presumably turns the great Deku tree into an Amazon warehouse. Moving on, let's consider a different random piece of property. Uh, how about, you know, maybe you say the Temple of Time? What, who said that? You know, I am really big on renovated old churches. There's a few that I've seen where people are living in them, which is it's just dang neat. Uh, and if I can be completely honest with myself, one of my dreams is to buy an old church and, you know, maybe fix it up a little, live in it, make some art. It could be fun. Uh, the problem is money. I'm a bit, I'm a bit short on that. But maybe if I start saving now, someday, that dream can come true. Uh, you know, just a small size place, because, good God, the thought of heating and cooling a giant church is really intimidating. And I think the problem with the Temple of Time is that it's fucking yes! huge. Uh, I don't want to live in a church that size. Uh, it's really more like a cathedral than your traditional sort of church. And the thought of doing anything in this place is absurd. Your monthly bill would be way too high. Uh, it's just completely impractical. You would be bankrupted day one. It's so tall that the ceiling is not even visible. 
goddesses only know what condition that's in. Not to mention what kind of bats and spiders are living up there. Ooh, and that does, that does kind of creeps me out. Uh, but, it, you know, it's charming. It, it, uh, no, it kind of lacks the charm, actually, uh, that I look for in a church. Mainly stained glass. You know, the, the stone is nice, but this kind of diner style flooring, it's very uh, art deco meets renaissance meets, you know, bizarre religious motions. Uh, so I don't think, I don't think it's worth considering no matter how big your wallet is. Uh, also, you know, it's hard to say whether or not uh, you could get the gemstones in them. You'd have to be sure that the seller is leaving those behind. Um, Cause if they're removed, you really only have one big room as opposed to one really big room and another like quite large room. What would I assess this at? Uh, considering it's prime location in Castletown, the most populated area in Hyrule, uh, and it is gargantuan, uh, this, this building is worth a fortune. I'm talking like 30,000 rupees. Uh, but listen, this is, it's a very different location than the Kokiri Forest, and whether or not anyone would pay that is like a whole different story. Uh, and we'll, we'll get to Castletown in, in due time. Uh, for now, let's go back to, let's go back to the woods. I think, I think there's one other spot worth considering in the, in the woods. Uh, and that's, you know, in this neighborhood or county. Not sure what exactly you'd want to call it. Uh, and that's, that's the forest temple. You might be thinking, well, actually, I, uh, I don't know what you're thinking. Uh, I'm not, I'm not pregnant. It's supposed to say prescient. Um, I'm neither of those things. And actually the word I'm looking for is omniscient. Uh, anyways, my, my point is I don't know what you're thinking. Uh, and the forest temple is full of friggin' monsters, dude. That doesn't sound like somewhere I would want to live. Well, you fool. Respectfully. Uh, here's the thing about monsters. You can hire exterminators. You know, no place is gonna be completely moving ready, you big dummy. Uh, especially an older home like this. That's just not realistic. You know, that's not why you buy a property like this. You kind of have to assume there's gonna be some things that aren't perfect with it. Things like large spiders and hands that fall down from the ceiling and grab you, or flying ghost skulls, and just ghosts in general, you know? But does any of that matter when you see the architecture here? Hmm, I mean, this is a pretty historic, beautiful building. Uh, and it is, in fact, you know, way too large for one person, or, you know, maybe even a family of 20 to live in, but, uh, you know, forget that. The uber wealthy, you know? God, why does no one ever consider the uber wealthy? Uh, it's not about what you need, it's about what you want. And sometimes you want this giant enclosed courtyard and, uh, a weird painting room where there's, like, a monster in it, but, like, it's whatever. Now, um, here's the thing. Actual real estate agents or appraisers, what, what am I again? I don't know. Anyways, in real life, uh, there's certain things you're not allowed to do, especially with advertisements, you know, listings. You, you can't do them in certain ways. Uh, but I'm a fictional person commenting on a real place. I don't know. Uh, you gotta keep the magic alive. Anyways, I'm not bound by the same rules as American real estate agents or any American agencies. All this is to say that this house is not in a great neighborhood. There is a literal maze of monsters um, right outside the door that you have to get through to get here. Uh, but if you do know what you're doing and are well equipped, the Lost Woods are pretty connected and that would be pretty convenient, you know? Um, but the house is old and you're definitely not going to be able to get any sort of FHA loan on this. Um, I mean, honestly, it's not going to pass any inspection, uh, and you'd be lucky if any banks approve financing this. So I'm going to go ahead and say that this is probably a cash-only deal, um, and also, you know, probably more cash than anyone getting an FHA loan would probably consider. I'm not exactly sure how that works. But anyways, if you've got a big vault of rupees burning a hole somewhere, come on down, scoop this dang place up. Plus, you know, if you get there early, who knows what treasures might still be inside. Maybe a bow. Um, what's it worth? Uh, it's like 10,000 rupees. You know, it's a steal. It's a steal. That's... I might buy it. If you don't first. Next up is Kakariko Village. Uh, and I would say Kakariko Village is, uh, is possibly the most desirable neighborhood you could find yourself in all of Hyrule. Possibly, I don't know. Uh, this is where a lot of people are gonna wanna be at. You know, it's a great place to live. We're gonna start at the back. Nope, 
we're gonna start at the front of town. And when you first approach the village, it's got, it's very charming. You know, it's got these two jovial fellas. <laughs> They're just having a gay old time, laughing, joking, and dancing. Happy Pride. You know, it's very kind of picturesque. Uh, it's got this lovely windmill in the back. Um, not sure what style of homes these are, if I'm being honest. They have a very uh, European, rural, medieval flair to them. Uh, in the game, the settlement of Kakariko Village, but it was not originally called that, I guess, was founded by the Sheikah, guardians of the royal family. And originally, it was only open to people from that tribe. Later, it was opened up to the poor commoners by Impa, a member of the Sheikah tribe, who was also born and raised in the village. She's often considered the de facto leader of Kakariko Village for helping the poor find refuge and for helping the settlement to thrive, as well as taking efforts to turn the village into a growing, thriving city. A goal that upon looking into the town further, I would say Impa has succeeded at. Uh, I'd place the average house price of Kakariko Village at about 2,500 rupees. Uh, it's a far better location to find yourself in than the Kokiri Forest. It has a relatively diverse population for Hyrule, at least in terms of ages. I guess it's not that diverse, I don't know. Kakariko Village is a town with eight different permanent structures. Three of those are houses, four of which are businesses, and the last, uh, of course, is the windmill, which I wasn't quite sure how to categorize. It's a windmill, it's its own thing. What does this kind of ratio imply about the village? Well, I think it definitely showcases the fact that there is a lot of through traffic coming through from the rest of Hyrule, you know, through to Death Mountain, visiting, I guess, their deceased loved ones. Um, it seems to be, you know, sort of like a highway town in a sense. Uh, it supports a lot of businesses, but there's maybe not so much of an inwardly supported community uh, at first. Although, you know, Impa maybe exists as a contrast to that. Uh, but you might be thinking, okay, what does all this really mean? Is the cost of living here going to be an even more significant jump up from Kokiri Forest due to the efforts to focus on new developments? Well, there's definitely a desirability to the location, and growth-wise, that drives the price up. Uh, but there's not going to be too significant of a choke of supply due to the focus on new construction. And I imagine there may even be some sort of first-time Kakariko home buyer initiative spearheaded by the village. So maybe I take back that comment about there not being enough of a community. Um, I would just like to formally apologize. I just realized that after filming that whole section, uh, my tripod was set slightly too low and my head was cropped off. So please enjoy these hats, or one hat, maybe, that I add on top of my head. But let's get into the first house in the village and see what it's got going on inside. Uh, this first house is very comfortable. It's a nice size. Uh, we've got some shelving. We've got kind of a few tables, which seem a little bit unnecessary. A nice cozy hearth. Uh, we've got two beds. Overall, you know, not bad. This is an open concept style home. Something you'll notice very prevalent here in Hyrule. One thing you'll notice here is that it's lacking in natural light. There are two windows, but they're both shuttered right now. Uh, and I'm not exactly sure what the homeowners are thinking, uh, since it seems a little bit stuffy. Uh, overall, this is a, a really a starter home. You know, there's no glaring things wrong with it, uh, but nothing a whole lot special about it to distinctly set it apart from any other domicile. Uh, I will say, it feels bigger on the outside than on the inside, which is unfortunate. Uh, I think that part of that is that these windows are closed. And the more I think about it, you know, it's probably because they're kind of in a high traffic area of town, you know, you're right on the main approach, which, you know, if you don't want people kind of all up in your business, then, you know, you're gonna wanna have your windows closed. I guess that makes sense. Uh, but it is a little bit of an unfortunate feature of the house. You know, I think a good solution here would be put up some sort of lace curtains or something that can let in some natural light and airflow as well, but still give you at least a degree of privacy. And this is really right in the middle. I'm pricing it at 2,500 rupees. You know, not bad, not exceptionally outstanding, just, you know, an honest place to live. Getting closer to Death Mountain, we're gonna check out the medicine shop. The medicine shop on first glance has nothing kind of too significant about it again. Uh, similar sort of traditional shop layout, but something unique, and this is certainly a pro, is that it has kind of a back, mm, I'm hesitant to call it a patio. 
Uh, but unfortunately, there's no fence that's surrounding this, so that's definitely not going to pass inspection. I can't imagine that's up to any code. Um, I would definitely try and get the seller to build some sort of railing uh, to make this actually safe uh, to be out on before you purchase, but, you know... Going down the ladder, uh, it's got this whole fenced-in shared backyard. Uh, you share it with Granny's Potion Shop, and it does unfortunately have a sinkhole, which, you know, <laughs> maybe you view as a pro. Uh, it kind of depends. I personally question the integrity of some of that ground in this backyard, knowing that this is what's underneath it. Uh, you'll notice if you live anywhere that has a lot of rabbits or any sort of burrowing creature uh, out in your yard or wherever they live, that kind of sinking and shifting in the grade that will happen due to their tunnels. Uh, something this large down here, I can't help but wonder if, you know, even already some of this ground has already sunk due to the nature of that giant cavity down there. Um, that'd be something else to have inspected by a more specialized professional. Considering the backyard situation, I think that drags it down a little bit, but I like that it is right by the entrance to Death Mountain, and I think that gives it a pretty good location, especially, you know, for a shop. Overall, I'd put it at 2,700 rupees. Nothing exceptional, but not a bad place to be by any means. Up next, we're looking at Granny's Potion Shop. Now, this place is charming. I really, really like the kind of floral wallpaper. It's very vintage, old-fashioned, you know? If it's not your thing, of course, you know, you could strip that and put up new paper. Probably most people are just gonna paint it. I'm not sure how many people really put up wallpaper anymore. Uh, this place, it's definitely built as a shop with the counter area, but, you know, you could renovate that, tear out half and make it a sort of bar or, you know, maybe open this up, have it be a, a kitchen counter. Uh, I think it's charming. One thing to consider as it's a potion shop though is you see all this smoke and steam that's going up. Again, as we've seen before, not properly ventilated. Mm -mm. This is all going directly into your ceiling, which I have to imagine is making all of that wood incredibly saturated and warped. Uh, I would be worried, honestly, about there being a lot of mold up in that attic space. Uh, that's going to be a nightmare. You know, currently, with this crazy housing market that I'm sure you know all about, waiving inspections is something that a lot of people have been doing. But, you know, that's dumb. You're gonna get saddled with a nightmare scenario, especially if you do that on a house like this. If you don't have a home inspector come through and crawl around in that attic space, cause you know, I can't, and I'm not gonna, but I am gonna go out on a limb here and say that there's black mold up in that attic and you don't want that. Ew, yuck, it's bad, you're gonna <coughs> You're gonna die. Yeah, it's charming, but my concern is just, it's all the mold and it's gonna be around the framing and the joists and the roof. It's its all gonna be covered in mold. You're gonna have to redo all of the joists up there, all of that framing and probably the entire roof at that point. It's gonna be easier to just s whole top of this building all over. And frankly, it's probably gonna be condemned as a health hazard. I don't know if your insurance is going to cash you out or give you any money for this. I mean, it would really depend on your policy and whether or not they send an adjuster out, and that adjuster might be the first person who finds all that mold, and then they're gonna tell the city, and you're not gonna be even covered in the first place. So, you know, as charming as the decor is, and I, I like the carpet too, you know, it's appealing, but that's also so porous, and this place they make potions, and there's a cat, maybe the cat's taxidermied, I don't know. Either way, I don't have smell of vision but I can only imagine the smell inside of here is a nightmare. You could probably smoke cigarettes in here to make it smell better. I don't think you'd be able to breathe in here. Uh, we should get out of this building, like, like right now. Let's, let's get out of here. What would I price it at? Well, I mean, land at least has value, as was determined by some people at some point in time. So 500 rupees. Uh, because honestly, I truly believe this building is going to be condemned. Um, yeah, 500 rupees, and that's pretty much just the cost of the land. Uh, I don't recommend anyone buys this place, and honestly, it should it should probably be torn down now. This lady, look, she didn't look like this before she lived in here, okay? And the fact that its entrance, its only entrance, is fenced in in an area that you have to get to from going through another building or flying with a bird, I don't know. 
Uh, it's weird, and it's butting up against this other house. Uh, I'm against everything about this. Except for, I guess, the interior decorating. Uh, tear it down. Up next, we've got the shooting gallery. It's a charming shop. I like the stone floors, but it's distinctly laid out as a sort of entertainment shooting gallery space. Are you gonna wanna live in this space and convert it? Eh, seems like a lot of work with, you know, all the brick features built in. Uh, even using it as a different sort of business space seems potentially challenging. Uh, converting it would definitely take some capital. Uh, so you'd have to really think about what other things you could do within this space that uh, kind of conform to this pretty rigid structure. Um, but that being said, the actual construction of the place with brick and stone makes it very high quality in comparison to a lot of the other buildings throughout the town. Climbing up in the lookout tower in town, you can see that the roof is definitely in good condition. You know, I guess you can climb up here anytime you want to check on it. Tell someone, hey, get the fuck off my roof. Yeah, I would end up appraising this at about 3,500 rupees. Though I do think it might have a hard time actually selling for that much. You know, sometimes what something is worth and what someone is willing to pay for it, sometimes these are two different things, you know? Uh, I will say one thing. When you're looking to buy in Kakariko Village, the well is dry. And, uh, you know, it's a little bit questionable. And I can't help but wonder if that may in fact be something more than a little bit concerning for the longevity of this entire community, being as the main easiest source of water is just gone. Uh, I know there's other sources of water nearby. You know, there's a river just outside of town, which is all well and good, but I don't think it bodes super well that the well is dry. Something else I'm concerned about too is what's at the bottom of the well, you know, Sometimes, ignorance is bliss, but if you've happened to have fallen down the well, uh, you know where that water is coming from. And I promise you, this water is not potable. Lead in your water is the least of people's concerns here. Uh, apparently, the well used to be uh, someone's house, or uh, under or over someone's house a long time ago. Uh, either way, that guy was a freak because there are all sorts of monsters and nasty things down here. You should just, just cover it up, dig a new well, you know, put a big rock right over this. Maybe, also, a free idea, the other well should be further away from your graveyard? I don't know. Uh, gamer girl bathwater be damned. My town has corpse water. Impa's house. Uh, this is a pretty substantially sized home. It has a whole lofted area going on, which, uh, you know, I do think is very nice. Though, I have to say, elephant in the room, cow in the room, there is the fact that there is a cow inside the house, and that, that's more than a little concerning. Uh, I have to wonder the condition of the floors. If you have a cow just living in your house, just kind of pitting and shitting constantly, uh, that's going to be a concern. You're going to want to check into that. Um, I'm concerned about what kind of rot is going on, not to mention the smell of having a cow live in your house for God only knows how many years. Well, we know at least the time between young Link and adult Link. The cow, maybe the same one or a different one, it's still there. That's too long. That's at least like eight to ten years. Also, there's a fenced in area just below this, outside of the house. You know, sure you have cuckoos in there, but like, Put the cow there. The, the whole ordeal is something that I would be more than a little bit hesitant to move into. You know, I'm sure you can paint and seal the walls and floor to try and get rid of that smell, but uh, I'd probably end up tearing out all of the flooring below the cow, maybe throughout the house, and uh, do you really want to live in a house with a big weird cage in it? And a door that opens, I'm sorry, it's not a door, there's a giant hole in one of the walls, no gates, no doors or anything. Uh, also, no way to get into the cage. Um, it's just a cage with a big hole in the wall that goes outside to a balcony. How did the ha Why is there a cow here, man? You know, I, theoretically, I guess you could squeeze in between the bars, but I find that very bizarre, and personally, I'd feel more than a little bit awkward if I had friends over and they're like, Oh, this is your new house. It's, you know, it's charming. I, I like it. Why'd you build a cage in the house? Oh, and you'd be like, No, I didn't. It was there. They'd be like, Okay, but like, what are you going to do with it? Why did you buy a house with a cage? 
I, it's, it's more than just a little bit concerning. Um, but ignoring that, the built-in bookshelves are charming and they're cute, you know? Look at it. Very large table, the cooking area, it's nice, you know, near the windows, which I think good to kind of help ventilate that space. Um, you know, there's good windows on this back wall, so you could definitely get a lot of outside air and movement into the space, which I think would really be nice in your cow house. Uh, also, if you have a cow in your house, I don't know why your windows aren't open all the time. All the time. Uh, I do like the loft. It's, it's well furnished, um, but that hole in the wall, it needs to get taken care of. There should not be livestock in this house or any house. Uh, but it is large. I like the location. Uh, despite some of the glaring issues, uh, I'm going to evaluate this at 2,900 rupees. Wow! Uh, let's go to the windmill. I think uh, it's absolutely not a place you're going to live. The, the sound of a constantly turning mill would be far too loud and incessant, and I imagine that's why this man is constantly playing music. Uh, he has gone insane. That's not the face of a man who is well uh, adjusted, and I can't help but feel residing here plays a part in that. Though I'm not gonna say he wasn't a little unhinged from the get-go, um, but I imagine that the windmill is not unlike a lighthouse. Uh, not in the sense that it drives you mad, uh, more like uh, like a firehouse and tower, fire tower in the sense of, you know, it's like a government-owned thing, and. This is probably owned by the village and, you know, the person who's living here and working and maintaining the windmill probably gets free housing as a sort of partial uh, compensation for the work that they're doing. Um, the value as an actual mill is hard to evaluate due to the fact that we don't see uh, any of the export or any other aspects of the grinding process. Um, and additionally, the windmill is connected to an underground grave system, which suggests possibly something occult and uh, deeper and darker going on with this town. Maybe this ties into the well in some way, a devious export of tainted wheat and water, evil bread? I don't know, that's just a theory. A game theory. Thanks for watching. And I theorize this building is worth about 10,000 rupees. Our last business in town is the bazaar. There's nothing uh, especially unique about a bazaar. They're a chain store, but you know, they're profitable. And there is some competition being as it's right across from the potion shop, but they seem to only mildly overlap in terms of their market that they're trying to quarter. That being said, a uh, bazaar is not going to command much of a premium, uh, and it is going to come in at about 2,750 rupees. Uh, moving on to the last house of the town. I don't know if I just said last house or building, but this is the actual last one, and it is the House of Sculptula. Uh, it's a little bit run down, you know? Uh, I mean, I think it would take some cleaning to, uh, oh, good God! Well, ethics of exterminating spider people aside, uh, one thing that I noticed about this building is that it has no windows. There, there are absolutely no windows, which definitely is a major con for me, uh, or at least there's no windows inside. I like natural light and not getting any big con, big, big thumbs down, not a fan of that. The building itself is quite big. It feels like maybe the largest building in town, which I probably would have guessed initially was the windmill. Uh, so definitely surprised to find that. Um, I like the wood floors though. Not sure if the walls are stone construction. It looks like maybe it's plaster. Uh, it's hard to tell, but you know, older homes typically would be plaster uh, over lathe instead of drywall, which is a bit more modern and common now. Um, something very bizarre about this building is that as you can tell from the outside, it's a square or a rectangle. Uh, but once you, once you walk inside of it, you have this sort of foyer entry into a larger octagonal great room. Uh, it, it doesn't match up. Uh, that plus the mismatching of windows on the exterior but not the interior almost makes it seem like the building has things finished over it on the inside. Uh, but certainly the scale, it just it does not match up at all. Uh, we have a partially finished ceiling if you look up. Uh, and you can see into parts of the attic, which is a little concerning to me. Uh, especially given the fact that gigantic spider people have been living here. Um, I definitely wonder what sort of condition that upper attic space is in. Um, God only knows what husks remain. 
Uh, it's super hard to evaluate this building. I think it has a ton of potential. Uh, probably the most of any in this town, but I also think it has the most unknowns and questionable things going on. Um, I guess aside from the building that I condemned earlier, uh, but I would price it at 1400 rupees due to just all of those downsides. Uh, finally, actual finally, I've said that three times now, uh, moving into the graveyard, we have one little structure left. We've got Dampe's shack. Uh, essentially a small room for a bed and a table. Uh, not a whole lot going on in here, and I imagine it exists in a similar way to the windmill as a structure for the occupancy of whoever is employed as the gravekeeper at the time. Uh, you most likely get to live there free with the job. Uh, what's the price stat? Spooky little dirty, spooky little dirty dirt grave, spooky little dirty grave shack. Uh, 250 rupees, you know, bada bing bada boom. Overall, how is Kakariko Village? Uh, overall, most of the house prices are promising. I'm not sure your house or shop would especially appreciate a whole lot of value over time, but I think you certainly wouldn't regret living here. Uh, the only real concern is the condition of a few of the houses. Potion Shop, the House of Skulltula, and Impa's House are all pretty questionable and need some pretty major repairs to the point where uh, they might all have to be just straight up gutted to studs and rebuilt. Uh, where would I recommend buying? Uh, well, personally, I love a challenge, and I'm overconfident. Uh, so I like the thought of trying to restore the House of Skulltula to its former beauty. Uh, as long as I can find the dang windows. Uh, but I think this is a great place to live, and you could have a very happy life in Kakariko Village. Moving on from Kakariko Village, we head up towards Death Mountain. Now, there's certainly a chance you might be thinking, well, there's nowhere to live up there. It's a big volcano. Uh, and I hope you're not thinking that because people surely do live up here. Uh, the Gorons, man. They are people and they live up here. Uh, and they're very similar actually to the Zora in the way that they both live in fairly communal open living settings. Um, now, how could you price something like that? Well, communal living and shared property kind of foregoes our capitalist understanding of property and ownership of Mother Gaia, but by God, will I do my best to disrespect these peoples and their cultures and put a price on something more meaningful and worthwhile than money. The Goron City. Uh, it definitely has its charms, but I can't help but wonder what it would feel like if you were to live here as a human. Uh, part of me thinks that the cave life would maybe be cold and a bit damp, but since you're so close to a volcano, I actually question if it would end up being too warm for you, uh, perhaps? You know, it's sort of the best of both worlds, where you're in just a nice, comfortable 65 degrees all the time. Uh, maybe, you know, the subterranean cool still keeps you nice and chill, but the volcano also keeps it from getting damp and yuck. Uh, you know, ultimately it's a video game and it's kind of hard to know what it actually would be like, but it doesn't seem to affect Link too much until he's in the actual volcano section where, you know, it becomes too hot to sustain life itself. So that maybe, you know, gives you some sort of indication, or at least it, you know, it tells you it's, it's habitable for humans. Um, as for the actual living quarters, a lot of people seem to sort of just chill here. Uh, there doesn't seem to be much of a sense for private space or reserved area with the exception of their leader. Uh, the space seems to mostly consist of one large great room with several different level tiers, and there are a few other actual rooms jutting off of it, but it really mostly is just one big thing, which, uh, I don't know, as someone who likes having my little trinkets and knickknacks, you know, I can't help but feel like I'd have a hard time being comfortable here. Where would I put all my shit? Uh, I'm not honestly exactly sure I want to put a bed in the room that's full of lava, but, you know, where else are you going to put it? Uh, frankly, if I'm being honest though, the Goron are incredibly friendly, and I imagine living near them would be an enjoyable experience. Uh, they seem like fun people to just chill with. Uh, what's all this worth though, I hear you asking? Uh, well, you know, that's a little hard to put a price point on and also like, calm down, we're talking about people's sacred homelands. Come on, their history, their culture, you fuck monster, chill out. You can't buy that out from someone. Uh, no, but you know, you could imagine, if you will, this was America, 
or even just, you know, if this was a lesser nation, you know, we can, we can do it. We know it can be done. And once the tragedy is over, what do you do with the land? Um, I picture this to the tune of 115,000 rupees. You sell this whole dang thing to some developers who put up a mall. You know, that's probably what it becomes. The location maybe isn't optimal. Not exactly sure how you're gonna get all the mall patrons up here, but the layout is already, you know, it's pretty perfect for a mall, you know? You just need to throw in some hot topics. I imagine the AMC goes over there. Uh, where the big Goron lives in a spa thingy with, you know, like authentic lava rock massages. Boom. You know, I just gave you a moneymaker on your hand. Dollar, dollar bills, y'all. Dollar, dollar bills. Moving on, just sticking with the uh, theme of being a horrible piece of shit. Let's head over to the Zoro's domain. Uh, you know, folks, no one regrets having to do this more than me, but here we are. You know, time to evaluate another community and their homeland. That's right, Zoro's Domain. Uh, this one actually is a little bit more difficult to evaluate, mostly due to it actually being one of the most significantly affected locations by the time change, as Young Link, uh, well, certain, certainly not the most affected though. As Young Link, the Zoro's Domain is a pleasant wet paradise. Oh God. Uh, but as an adult, the place is all frozen over. Uh, all the dang fish people are gone too. Except for that one that isn't. Anyways, I think that the Zoro's Domain is worth far more, and maybe only worth something, when it is unfrozen and occupied. You see, land acquisition is all about taking. If no one's living there, it must not be worth taking from someone. You know? Something to think about. When there is a thriving community, you know, there's gotta be some sort of money to be made here. Come on, come on. I'm thinking spa, I'm thinking resort. Beautiful waterfall, boat tours around, Jabu Jabu. Heck, charge a premium for some sort of retreat inside Jabu Jabu. Wow, charge the elites a fortune for a once in a lifetime experience. Be inside God. Wow, picture it, sushi, sushi. Well, you roll up, Zora's shop, boom, now they sell sushis, Zora rolls. Ooh, sorry, that's just, that's a tongue in cheek. You know, we're, we don't eat people around here, that's not okay. Kick someone out of their homeland, but by God, leave them some dignity, don't eat them, okay? Most of the passages to get here are a little bit underwater, and you know, you'd require some construction, but once you actually did that, this is incredibly accessible, geographically, might be one of the most uh, accessible places in all of Hyrule. It has a beautiful interior, uh, so much potential for expensive resort pricing. Whew. Ooh, Nelly, this is worth something. You know, I'm thinking, I'm gonna say a crazy number. Someone hold me, someone hold me back. What? One, two, two, one, mm, 200, 240, 245,000. That's what it is, 245. Thousand rupees money cash glass crystal money. We're talking. We're talking like mm, We're talking silver rupees here. Okay mm, Nothing less than purple enters the resort. Let's calm down a little bit. Okay. I got a little bit too heated on that last one We're gonna head out of the Zoro's domain and uh, We're gonna we're gonna go out to Lake Hylia, you know Definitely a, a calm cool sort of place, you know, you might at first be thinking, you know I guess I'm not sure what you're thinking. You know, there's there's literally no way that I could tell that. I am not. Did I already do the prescient joke? I don't even know what I'm thinking right now. There are in fact two structures on Lake Hylia. The first of which is the fishing shop, which is an incredibly bizarre sort of structure built into the side of a stone, dirt, wall. Uh, the building only has three walls and it opens up into this sort of hidden secluded lake surrounded by trees. Uh, the construction of the store itself is a little bit questionable, like why even bother since theoretically someone could just walk through these trees and end up back here and, I don't know, rob you of everything you've got? Uh, the construction also seems possibly dubious to me with the way that it is built into the hillside, but not protected from the weather due to the lack of a fourth wall. Uh, this building, it does have some wonderful construction with beautiful masonry and natural wood. You know, I, I find it really charming all in all, but I mean, is the building really worth anything? I'm gonna say not really. The value would be in the actual pond and that land. Um, 
but I can't help but feel like a stocked pond next to a giant natural lake is an odd choice of business. Like I can just literally fish outside of here for free and keep the fish. Uh, and you know, no one's gonna make fun of me when I tell them this is this is where I caught my big fish, but uh, I suppose that's that's facile uh, because there's a game aspect to the prize of fishing in here and it's more like shooting clay pigeons than actual hunting in a sense. Uh, still though, wouldn't this business be better suited like closer to Kakariko Village or Castletown? I just don't, I don't think the numbers are here and I would value it at only 2,500 rupees, mostly due to the poor location and I think kind of lack of foresight. Um, now, downside of Lake Hylia is that there are in fact monsters here, which, you know, possibly you wouldn't want to live in a spot where there's hostile enemies like that, but, uh, you know, as far as monsters go, they're not overly powerful. They, they seem fairly avoidable. Uh, you're probably fine. Uh, the other building present on Lake Hylia is the Lakeside Laboratory, which is an incredibly bizarrely built building that I can't imagine is up to code. Uh, it has a chimney as well as a separate tower uh, that certainly to me looks like a later addition uh, that was built onto it, presumably without applying for any sort of permits or doing anything following any kind of code. Uh, inside, the Lakeside Laboratory itself is super interesting. Uh, I love the way that it's decorated. It's got all these different aquatic specimens, you know, some shells, crab over here, you know, certainly some sort of hopefully not nefarious deeds are taking place here. The fact that it opens up into this big giant pit uh, would definitely make living here a less than ideal situation. Uh, given that it would all just be incredibly humid in here, every single waking moment. Uh, I imagine being inside this building is not unlike being inside of an aquarium. Uh, also spooky, I guess I didn't realize that Lake Hylia was big enough to have sharks or I guess it has freshwater, a freshwater shark or maybe, I don't know, this guy, he just, he just chills here and he's very neat. Might have been shipped in from somewhere else. I'm not sure, I don't know. Uh, this is a weird building, but I love it. That being said, I would only think it's worth about 850 rupees. Uh, the thought of living here, it's not super ideal. Too much, too much water inside the building. Uh, and, you know, I think Lake Hylia is not the most dangerous area, but there are monsters lingering outside. So, you know, keep that in mind. Um, you're also removed from the rest of Hyrule. It's incredibly rural. Um, as you can see, there is a small patch of garden though, so you can ensure that you're somewhat self-sufficient, which I, I like that. And you know, you're, you're by a big lake. That's, that's definitely appeal. Personally, uh, it would be a front runner for me if I could just figure out what on earth I would do with that giant pool. Maybe like lower the water level a little bit. I don't know, put, put glass over it. You tell me, you, you let me know what you would do if you were living inside this weirdo laboratory. Come on down to Castletown. Castletown is the presumed capital of Hyrule. And let me tell you, Castletown, this market is thumping and bumping. Uh, mostly it consists of shops. Uh, there are residential areas, but you can't explore most of them. And now being in the capital and the most bustling part of the whole country, kingdom, Hyrule Kingdom, uh, your average shop price here is going to be about 6,000 rupees. Uh, just due to the sheer amount of traffic and money that is here to be made. Uh, first off, let's look at the potion shop. This is a fairly standard potion shop fare. Uh, although I will say it appears as though there's possibly some seating over there on the side, uh, you know, which is not typically present in other potion type shops. Uh, so that's cool to see that, you know, they'll let you just get completely strung out in this place. Um, 
There's also another built-in bookshelf as well. Uh, and you can see the, the two stones where potions are being prepared uh, in the shop. So as far as potion shops go, uh, I do think this is one of the better ones. It's, you know, a little bit more transparent as far as what they're doling out. And I would put this at just above the standard rate uh, at about 6,200 rupees. Moving next door, we have the Bazaar, which is not unlike every other Bazaar we've seen. Uh, these are definitely a franchise system where, you know, you need a big bug-eyed, burly, wide man. Uh, and the construction is probably the same across the board concerning each floor plan, you know, using this tile and strict adherence to the backing off of not letting me look in the back area. I mean, come on, guys. It's a government appointed position. I'm just doing my hmm, uh, 6,000 rupees. You know, it's just it's just your standard. Nothing better, nothing worse. Uh, moving over to the other side of the market, you have a treasure chest contest space that is not open during the day. Uh, all right, let's just let's just come back here later. Hey, just play the sun song. Just, just play the sun. Do just that. play the sun Do song. Do that. One thing you'll notice is that at night, this area is just absolutely over overrun by dogs. Yeah, there's a lot of them. Inside the Treasure Adventure is a game that I had almost completely forgotten was here in the first place. Visually, it looks a lot like a dungeon, uh, and inside you move through a series of linear doors trying to get to the uh, prize at the very end. Uh, I imagine the reason that this is only open at night is, you know, this shady character probably doesn't get out of bed until after 2 p.m. or, you know, Hyrule possibly has some restrictions surrounding gambling and you know maybe it's not legal during the day or something try and keep the kids away from it um but the building itself the layout uh, is pretty awkward for anything other than something like this you know when else would you need a series of linear rooms lined up like this uh possibly you could create like a sort of escape room business thing uh that could be big here in hyrule i think there's a market for that um but, you know, it, it is quite a bit larger than your other shops, so I would evaluate it at about 8,500 rupees, mostly due to that size. Um, you know, you could change how these rooms are. You could probably open them up a little bit more and just have a, a really large extended shop in here, maybe. I, I would show you the end of the building, but, you know, I, I kept losing, and um, I, I know, I know. 100% of the time, you quit gambling right before you hit it big. Uh, well, whatever. It's a game of chance, and I would be embarrassed to be good at it anyways, okay? Uh, moving on, you've got the classic Bomb Chew Bowling Alley, which is truly, ah, uh, it's just a fantastic building. I love the brick with the incredible neon lighting. You know, truly, this is one of a kind place, you know? No other in Hyrule. Uh, one thing definitely <laughs> worth noting about the Bomb Chew Bowling Alley, uh, is that you're setting off little explosives? within the building uh, and these are you know these are not just toys or, or special effects or anything like that you know we have we, we know how much literal damage bombs can do you know these these things are explosions that to the point of you know they're knocking down walls and I do not think you would want to live anywhere near this building complex and and certainly not in that building uh, but you know even close by you would probably feel the shaking do they, do they really have a permit for this you know how has this not been shut down yet uh, i can only imagine mob money uh, but you know turning a blind eye to the corruption within hyrule you know because i don't want a part of that uh, i don't want to buy a building that has had explosives routinely going off in it you know, maybe it's been constructed with this in mind, but you know, it looks it looks the goddamn yeah. same as the rest of the buildings in this town, and I don't trust it. Get a structural engineer and let's let's see what's up. Four thousand rupees, okay? You know, it's not like it's not someone's gonna pay that much, but uh, moving on, we've got another shooting gallery, you know, and it's it's really unfortunate. You know, I had thought that the shooting gallery was a small family-owned business uh, and it's really unfortunate to discover that one of your favorite spots you know you thought it was a charming little mom and pop stop uh, is in fact just yeah, it's just a chain you know chalk that up as one of life's disappointing realizations uh, either way same as the bazaar 
profitable. But as we said with the other one back in Kakariko Village, it's a nice building, constructed well, uh, and that's going to bump it up a little bit, but not as significantly in this competitive area, uh, to about 6,500 rupees. Uh, and ooh, what do we got just around the corner? Oh, baby, it's the happiest place on earth. That's right. It's where dreams come true. You know, when you're here, your family, it's the happy mask shop. Uh, and structurally, it's, it's pretty much the same as all the other shops. Uh, but it has the fun exterior, you know, fun interior. Got this facade. Uh, there's not a whole lot to say, you know. Uh, Castletown is actually quite a bit more uniform than I had to, uh, had expected. Um, you know, the, the main market square, s interesting, but um, yeah. Uh, what do I price the Happy Mask Shop at? Uh, um, I don't know, 6,001 rupees? Heading away from the center of town, you can head down this little alleyway and you can see where certainly more people are actually choosing to live, um, probably zoned differently. Uh, some people don't want to let you in your house and do not realize that this is in fact an official and mandatory government survey. Uh, let me in your house. Knock, knock, knock. I want to see what it looks like. Uh, eventually, though, if you wander far enough, you can find places you can go inside of, or at least places where they didn't lock the door. Whose house is this? I don't remember, but let's look at it. You've got your standard cook stove, um, and I cannot believe that someone just let a fire going in this house um, without being home. That's crazy. I mean, it seems like kind of a danger, but, you know... Maybe they're slow cooking a, a cuckoo. You'll notice one thing that's a little bit unique is that instead of just having a bunch of tables, this person has elected to turn one table into a sort of desk, you know, good job. Uh, we've got a dresser. It's a little bit hard to tell, but this is uh, one of the only real chairs that we've seen in all of Hyrule. So that's, you know, very exciting. Uh, the person was keeping some money here, but that's mine now. Uh, and you'll notice there is some sort of optical illusion where I think the room looks a lot smaller until you kind of grasp just how incredibly large the room is when you're looking at the actual floor plan. Uh, I'm not, you know, I'm not really sure. You could partition, have, have sort of a private area with all the space. Uh, if you just sort of section off, you know, this part, you could have a, a kitchen. Essentially, you could have three different rooms in here. Um, you know, it could be a very comfortable, like, one-bedroom apartment, you know, with a unique sort of bedroom area. That, you know, that definitely is not the current style within Hyrule at this point in time, uh, but, you know, I like it. It's a nice house. Uh, I would price it at about 4,500 rupees, but it's a little bit hard to know uh, until more people let me in their houses, and then, you know, then we can get a better grasp of it. Uh, it's, you know, it's a high cost of living area. I will certainly tell you much, but commercial property is going to demand a bit more, uh, just due to the nature of money. <sighs> Maybe I need to rethink my life. I don't know. There's more to life than just rupees and selling land, man. What do I really want to do? What do I really want to do? Also in this back alley is the bomb chew shop, which, uh, considering we're in like a residential area, uh, I think is maybe a little bit, uh, of a secret little, uh, not, not, uh, government approved, but you know, I, hey, I'm not an ARC, okay? You know, I'm not an ARC. Uh, maybe someday I do a redux of this video where I also compare the 3DS versions. That's never gonna happen, but you know, maybe. Uh, because they are different and some of the locations are drastically different. Possibly this is the biggest difference of any of them, uh, because uh, this place gets an extreme makeover. As it stands now, this is a dirty little back alley shop. Ugh, gross. And it sells bombs. Something is, is majorly wrong with this place. And you don't want a part of that. But then you see it in the 3DS version, you're like, this is kind of, this is kind of cute. I don't know. Uh, as it stands though, uh, 1800 rupees. Uh, I don't know. It's Something's weird about this. I want no part of it and neither should you, okay? Uh, I do wish you could see more of the residential side of Castletown, uh, as it's a bit of a bummer that you can only really see one house and the rest are 
businesses that aren't terribly unique. You know, I'd love to know what the apartment up here above the Banchu bowling alley is like. Yeah, and I, I guess we have one last building, which is the little guard room, uh, which I, I don't exactly count in my survey of businesses and living quarters. Um, unless you're gonna argue that this guy lives here. You know, unless you travel forward in time. I'm, I'm here to say that my investments have not paid off. Uh, I invested all of my money in um, Castletown real estates. Um, I, I did in fact, I did in fact buy that bomb chew, uh, store and I poured so much money into it thinking that it would, you know, I was like, what a good deal. You know, you buy it cheap, you sell it high, uh, and then the market collapsed and, um, yeah, I, I am destitute. And you know, my government job, the government that I worked for, that I was hired for to do this whole land survey, they don't exist anymore. Um, so no one, no one signs my paychecks. Um, I've, I've taken to uh, thievery. Nah, I'm just kidding, I'm not cut out for that. Um, I'm broke, but uh, you know, uh, it is what it is. You know, that's what they say, it is what it is. Um, uh, so ca yeah, Castletown is completely, completely destroyed. There's, you know, there's nothing left to survey here. Um, or is there, come on, uh, you know, I may not have any money, but I still got a pep in my step and that's, I'm gonna, mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, there, there is that, that one more, there is one more building. Well, I already looked at it, but it's different now as an adult, because when you go back, there's a dude that's, um, just sort of living there, you know? And, um, yeah. Anyways, uh, this guy you know, he still likes living here, so that's something, you know, things could turn around. He's living a good life. This dude is straight chilling, and you know what? I respect that. Honestly, this place seems a lot cozier than it did before. Uh, I don't know if it's the spears on the wall or the sick little neon happy face, but honestly, I like what you do with the place, dude. You know, you can't put a price on something like this. Uh, you literally can't. No one will buy it. This, <laughs> this neighborhood is terrifying. And I only have five rupees to my name. Uh, how exactly do you evaluate Castletown? I'm talking like pre-destruction Castletown. Uh, at one point in time, you know, it was certainly a great place to do business. Uh, but if you didn't sell at just the right time and get the heck out of Dodge, uh, you know, you'd be, you'd be destitute. Um, but back in the past, you know, those uh, businesses were all thriving. A lot of money to be made there. A lot of money to be lost there too, you know, when you think about it. Uh, you know, let's move on. Even even though I'm not, you know, employed by the government anymore, um, I'm, I'm gonna see this job through to completion and we're gonna go to one last stop just for old time's sake and that is Lawn Lawn Ranch. You know, we're just gonna take a little, quick little horse ride. We're just gonna ride, you know, jump over. We're gonna just jump over this fence. You just gotta jump over this fence. We're gonna take a little ride. Okay, you could just, if you jumped, if you could just jump, Never mind. whatever. Lon Lon Ranch, uh, it's incredibly charming. You know, ain't no two ways about it. It's a nice plot of land kind of uh, secluded by the large canyons that it lives within, uh, as well as the additional fencing to kind of close it off. Uh, there's a few different buildings on the property. There's the house, the shed slash barn, uh, and then there's one outbuilding further on the other side of the track. Um, there are in fact cows, as well as a little horse track, which you know is, is nice. Uh, I mean, it's a ranch. If you want a lot of green space, this is a, a nice place to be. I would like to use it for a little bit less, you know, straight ranching, a little bit more farming. That's kind of more my shtick. Uh, I like to grow things. Um, uh, self-sustainable I like that but I mean with having cows and cuckoo you've got you know no shortage of food you got milk you got eggs you got 
Meat. Uh, my only real concern geographically is you're not really close to water, and I don't see a well anywhere on the land, which makes me think that uh, you may, in fact, have to take a pretty decent trip towards the nearest river, which is not exactly that close, uh, especially given the amount of animals that are present on the ranch that uh, makes me wonder how much of your day is going to be spent just trucking water back to the ranch. Um, the house itself, while certainly spacious and charming, uh, has kind of become used as a second barn, which personally I think seems incredibly unnecessary. Just build a coop for your cuckoos, or, you know, I guess the thought is why do that when you have all this whole area down here? Uh, let's just throw some hay down. You know, good enough. Uh, why not? Why not is because the smell would be awful. As we've mentioned before, pick and chicken. I don't like it. They're ruining the nice hardwood. Uh, but it's really charming. There's some skylights, because uh, you'll notice there's no windows on the wall, but uh, you know, you'd still get some natural light in, which definitely a pro. Um, the fact that there's no railing going up the steps is more than a little bit concerning, especially given that the door opens right up out here, uh, and you're liable to just launch yourself down what looks to be, you know, possibly a 12 foot or greater drop. Um, not to mention, looking at this staircase, there's this giant step. Uh, there's no real argument even that this is a step. It, it's far too tall, and it seems to be missing a whole chunk of the staircase, essentially. Um, I imagine that possibly there was a higher step here and maybe more of a landing at one point, so I'm not really sure what happened. Possibly decay or rot. Uh, and they, they ended up tearing this down in the, the railing, um, maybe removing some of the steps, just trying to presumably get some of the cuckoo picked uh, out of the boards. Um, something you, you would need to be investing in. But ignoring all of that and going upstairs, this bedroom is incredibly charming, and I think one of the absolute nicest living spaces that we have seen so far. You know, the table is cute, nice little homey touches, uh, adding an actual tablecloth as well as these small centerpiece, you know, it's, it's charming, it's charming. The chairs are certainly on the more rudimentary side, uh, as far as just sort of looking like hewn logs, less constructed and more just hacked. Um, but we have an actual dresser, which, you know, is incredibly nice and something that we see in very few homes. The, the bedspread on the bed, very cute. Um, I've got to say, this is it's probably the nicest furnished home in all of Hyrule. Uh, and it's a bit of a shame that the downstairs is such a barn, uh, as I can definitely imagine hosting some real fun hangouts with all your people down here. Um, also, the windows, they, they don't make sense. There's exterior windows here, and you'll notice that inside, those windows do not match up with the construction. I wonder, you know, if possibly at some point those walls were finished over, and if you tore back some of this, you know, interior drywall or lathe or whatever it is, um, there's maybe still windows there. It certainly seems like an odd choice from the renovation standpoint, um, but, you know, people do all sorts of crazy things with their homes. Uh, all in all, I think, you know, Lon Lon Ranch would definitely be a nice place to live. Um, it is a little bit odd that there aren't any sort of barrels or kegs, you know. Where are you keeping your water? I mean, you know, certainly you could drink a large amount of milk, but hydration, yeah, that's just my biggest concern. Like, where? Water. Um, but I would price Lon Lon Ranch in at a smooth 22,000 rupees. You know, it is a nice place. And that's actually maybe a little bit low. I don't know. It's been a few years, and I'm kind of... I'm feeling kind of rusty. 22,000. Forest Temple. Did I overprice the Goron Village? Or am I underpricing this? I don't know. Uh, if you put in some hard work, it's going to pay for itself. Uh, and, and that's it. That's all of Hyrule properly assessed. You might be thinking, hmm, you forgot one pretty big place. Uh, to which I'll say, no, I didn't. Anyways, I hope you've saved up plenty of rupees. Tell me where you'll be buying and what you plan to do there. What will your life be like once you buy the bazaar in Kakariko Village and turn it into a milk bar? I don't know. <laughs> I'm dying to know, though. Anyways, uh, thank you for watching, and let me know what other video game you want to see assessed. Um, whether or not it's property values or just looking at houses, um, you know, I like doing that kind of thing. Uh, and the sooner you comment, the sooner it'll come out in the next six to four years. I don't know. Um, thank you.
And remember, uh, if you rent, you have rights, and your landlord needs to respect those. All right, take care now. <laughs>